The following is a work of truth scrambling. Names, characters, businesses, events, and incidents are not the product of the author's imagination. Any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, or actual events is not purely coincidental. However, the opinions expressed about them is speculative and based on whistleblower reports, private research into the occult, and a healthy bit of intuition and imagination. So with that, let's get started here. This is part two of Aeon of the Twins, Horus and Ma'at, the double current, son and daughter of Isis and Osiris. It's been my view for some time now when studying conspiracies that well, many films, books, movies, TV shows, many, 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 if not all the popular ones, are coded up in some way. Uh, some more than others. However, every once in a while, a book, movie, or TV show will come along that's special. That not only hides these codes and riddles that we've been disclosing for many years, but verbatim tells you step by step, detail for detail, exactly what they're doing. In other words, a lot of the, it's not, nothing special for them to hide the codes and flip them around and scramble them up a little bit here and there. But every once in a while, they have to actually pretty much lay out the truth, unvarnished, exactly what they're doing. So certain books, TV shows, and movies are, are slated for this task. And why, why, you ask, do they do that? Why do they tattle on themselves? It's part of their karma, it's part of their deal with God, you might say, that they have, the dark side has to tell you exactly what they're doing um, in order for it to be allowed cosmically. And so with that hypothesis in mind I'm going to I'm going to do something I don't usually do with with these posts is uh I'm going to give you an, an my interpretation and I'm not telling you that this is the truth I'm t I'm saying this is my hypothesis this is an idea that I've garnered over time by looking at these clues and putting them together now Normally, I don't like to do that. I like to just lay out the puzzle pieces and let you form your own conclusion. However, I think this one is pretty compelling, so I'm going to give you my take on this uh, in a large, larger sense, perhaps, than usual. So the special film, book, movie, TV shows that I'm going to be coalescing into one theory here is the novel Middle Game by Seanan McGuire. And I've I talked about this in my last video. And I'm going to be comparing it and aligning it with two films, Inception by Christopher Nolan and Avatar by Mike Cameron. And there might be a few other films and books that come along that are going to tie in nicely of course back to the future has a lot of symbol magic and can always tie in with these things but these three are, are the main ones that i'd like to uh, see if i can integrate and synthesize into one cohesive fabric here and in addition to these fictional pieces we must always keep in the back of our mind Donald Marshall's testimony, this guy who claims to be a whistleblower, but he's probably another gatekeeper. And so we have to uh, use his narrative, but uh, try to see past it in certain ways as well as a half-truth. So his message about the, cloning, the celebrity cloning centers and the Vril lizards, the ones that possess and walk into human beings and make them their host. In other words, they are supposedly uh, 
killing the host and using their bodies as like a puppet, which he claims that many of these celebrities are indeed these, uh, actually these reptilian walk-ins. So with that, let's jump into my hypothesis. So with Donald Marshall, we get this story about the cloning centers. And if you are not familiar with this, just very briefly, the idea is that every night, uh, all the celebrities, all the polit big name politicians, uh, basically all those who are in the Illuminati, who either were born into it, or maybe they sold their soul for fame and money to be in, in the club, uh, but however it is, they are, they, they're, when they're in REM sleep, their consciousness, instead of dreaming, their consciousness gets uh, transferred or zapped into a clone of themselves, a clone that lies dormant at the cloning center, which is a certain floor in the deep underground military bases that are throughout the world. So there's different cloning centers in the, um, here on Earth. and uh, So they get taken there, and there's these wicked games, the Sturge Arena, these death games that get played with these clones. The, the victims get tortured there and used and abused, etc., etc. And uh, the blueprint for this can be seen in the film Avatar, so the character Jack uh, Jake Jake Sully he goes into the machine he goes to sleep and he gets transferred into the alien body one of these large blue humanoids called the Navi now the Navi are grown in a tank and they are in perpetual coma unless activated via REM sleep so it's the same with these clones at the cloning center. They're not, it's not like there's another one of you walking around. It's this other body of you that's dormant until you get transferred there during REM sleep. Okay, so now a similar version of this, let's say, is told through Christopher Nolan's Inception, only instead of clones it's it's uh they they all share the dream it's the shared dream so instead of this actual place like a deep underground military base where they all meet up it's actually a an astral realm you could say the dream realm where they can meet up and, sh and share experiences again while asleep so they all hook into this futuristic high-tech machinery and they share one of one person's dream they all enter the dream as if it's a, a simulation so this might actually be closer to the truth i don't know this might be more like what's happening there might not be clones in a cloning center physically this might be just code code language for um, meeting up in the astral realm, the shared dream. And in fact, um, if you read Kenneth Grant's work, he seems to suggest that this very thing is happening. The nightmare sleep that uh, allows for these left-hand path initiates to access the tunnels of Set, which are the Klipoth the realms of the shades. And I think of that film Minority Report with the, the three uh, precogs who are lying there perpetually asleep and dreaming their, their precognitive nightmares. They can see into the future whenever someone's going to be murdered, which allows for the government to utilize them as a uh, well they they use their visions to develop pre-crime division 
stopping crimes before they happen. This being based on a Philip K. Dick novel. Philip K. Dick, by the way, was filled his fiction with uh, precognition, telepathy, telekinesis, not unlike Dean Koontz and Stephen King, who are both most likely in the Illuminati and are basically being paid to, again, push these half-truths. And a lot of these celebrities don't realize what's happening. They think it's a dream. They don't understand the physics and the science behind the, the clones and the consciousness transfer. And uh, especially a lot of people, might these victims who think that they are being abducted by UFOs, they get taken at night, but they're not going anywhere. They start to film their body to prove that they're being abducted and their body does not move in their bed at night. And yet they have all these memories, all these horrible experiences. So this explains it, how it works. So anything you, let's say you're being tasked to write songs, anything you think, you think of a melody in your head, you're wearing this helmet, as a clone at the cloning center and it gets broadcasted through the speakers. So you don't even have to know how to play the instrument. You just have to be somewhat creative and musical and you can create these songs. Okay, so... And then on the Donald Marshall Facebook page, they, uh... He posted this showing that you know, the, the science, the mainstream science that is coming out is saying that this is happening. They're converting brainwaves into verbal speech. Of course, what they tell you is always way behind what they actually, the technology that they actually have, way more advanced than what is coming out in the public. So we can run through some songs and films and TV shows and try to get a knack for how they hint at these things in a sideways fashion. Billie Eilish in an interview says, I feel like my dreams always happen. Hmm. And it's caused a lot of issues because I think a lot of people around me know that my dreams happen. So we kind of protect or we stay away from things similar to the dream. Hmm. And this was in a reference to being asked about the song lyric, when we all fall asleep, where do we go? Where do we go? The classic TV show Westworld, the park could be seen as a giant cloning center. The hosts, which are, well, in the show, they're AI, right? They're these... Uh, Cyborgs, I guess, but they get shot up and killed daily as a part of the game. The, the rich elite come and get to pretend that they're these uh, wild, wild west types. And they get to shoot and rape the, the, the hosts as part of their, to letting, let off steam, you know, and... Uh, the hosts then have to be taken underground and fixed up so they can be brought back out again. So this seems a lot like how the real victims, the hosts, are abused at the cloning center for the entertainment of the elite. Of course, they're not AI. These are real human victims. And there's even a, a theme of escape from the cloning center. Britney Spears has a music video about this exactly, where she's cloned and she gets, escapes from the cloning center. Forgive me, I forget the name of the song. But yeah, so Mav is a, she's a host 
in the show. And she finally escapes the cloning center. She makes it out into the real world. The TV show The Island is pretty blatant. It's about clones that are being used to basically be replacement organs replacement parts for the elite. Of course, Blade Runner talks about these things, the replicants, clones, AI, altered carbon, the price of flesh. Fairly similar to the island where those, the rich and wealthy have, they can re-sleeve their consciousness into a new clone when they're on the verge of death so they can technically live forever or, the, or at least as long as they can keep getting these clones made of them. The clones can be made of them while in, in the prime of their life. They never have to age as long as this technology continues. Okay, transhumanism at its best. Now, I'd like to focus in on three artists, if you will, and look at some lyrics, look at some music videos. And these uh, artists have been speaking to me lately. First is Sia, the singer. She's got a song called Elastic Heart. And the music video is quite disturbing, if you think about it. We've got Shia LaBeouf and... Maddie Ziegler in some kind of cage and they're fighting. Hmm. Could the cage be the cloning center? We know that Shia LaBeouf is a, a Disney star, child star at a young age. And when he started getting older, he had all this erratic behavior and he claims it's his abusive father, but to me, it seems like another MK Ultra victim, child star who was probably used and abused by these elite types. Now it's funny because Saya sings in a different song. I want to shut down the club with you. <laughs> what club are we talking about here? Okay, so. Shia LaBeouf, he cannot escape. He's too big to escape the uh, the cage here. However, Maddie Ziegler is small enough to escape. She can come and go as she pleases. So is she not a victim at all, but maybe one of these elite types? Maybe she's part of an elite family. And she, because the elites go to the cloning center for fun, they can go whenever they want and observe in the stands while the victims are being forced to go. So she can escape, but he can't. And uh, something about her disturbs me as maybe possibly either, again, this elite type or maybe not even human, maybe a possessed uh, well, demonically possessed or a real possessed uh, because she keeps doing this thing with her eye and it's the one eye bleeding it's the, the thing that, that goes through the eye socket to penetrate the brain to take over a victim basically to create a host so these uh, these screenshots are all going to show us how a young child is mind controlled through trauma based mind control to create uh, an empty empty slate that they can program whatever they want into.
the end result of abuse, a young person that is broken, bewildered, and dissociated from reality. So in that state, they can then be programmed with different altars and things like that. Some other notable lyrics. Uh, it's hard to lose a chosen one, she sings in Elastic Heart. So I think chosen one, I think these victims, but not just any victims at the cloning center, but also the the chosen ones are the are the these songwriters, these ghost writers that are very talented, young, maybe even children or teenagers that are being used for their creativity, the chosen ones. And in middle game, we we see the blueprint for this, where the at birth, the dark alchemists are incarnating these doctrines, these power powers into the children to basically enhance their latent psychic abilities so they can channel the gods when they write these beautiful songs. And I believe that the twins are especially used in, as a special project because the twins can, can work together and write twice the, twice the music. And they can channel the horse and ma'at current, which Kenneth Grant talks about. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, she came, we came from the same cocoon, she sings in a song called Butterflies. <laughs> now, twins come from the same womb, right? And butterflies, of course, is a, well, the monarch is a MK Ultra symbol. Now, in the, in the book, Middle Game, which I went into in the last video, on page 13, it says, The doctrine of ethos, as described by Pythagoras, held that certain musical instruments and modes could influence the balance between logos, or rational behavior, and pathos, or emotional thought. So these are the doctrines that are placed into these gifted children, these chosen ones. Now looking at 21 Pilots, we have a the song called The Outside. Now, all, many of these music videos, uh, there's a story being told that throughout many of the songs in 21 Pilots, and you get a little snip, a little piece here, a little piece there, but you have to put them all together, piece them all together to get the full story, otherwise you're totally confused and baffled. But at the end of one of their songs, we have a, a, a flash. This scene is just flash, not even a second, like half a second. I had to slow down the speed of the, of the video just to get this screenshot. Now, it looks to me like maybe boy, girl, twins, horse, and ma'at. And uh, the angel statue in between them, just like the lover's card. Okay, the lover's card ruled by Gemini, which is the twins. And the drum set. Okay, so we have music, musical modes, which are used to evoke logos and pathos, the emotional thought and rational behavior, so they can mind control the populace through the music which is written at the cloning centers. Okay, I'm trying to tie these threads all together here. Trench. A trench is something deep underground. Hmm. Just like the deep underground military bases. So that's the name of their album, their latest album, Trench. And uh, the singer... Blinking on his name. Sorry. But he faces off against this Illuminati type, right? This dark looking, freaky looking magician type. Many of their lyrics are very illuminating. Please use discretion in the song called Message Man. He sings, 
Please use discretion when you're messing with the message man. These lyrics aren't for everyone, only few understand. I'm wanted and on the run, so I'm taking this moment to live in the future. Okay. Ma'at streams from the future towards the present. Horus from the past towards the present. So they are... It's a dual current running from past and future and meeting up at the present, which is why I believe we're seeing these Mandela effects because the future is, in fact, influencing the past. Cause and effect is not how we assume it works. Now these lyrics here on the bottom look to me like maybe talking about the clone bodies, the jumpsuit. I'm heavy, he sings. My jumpsuit makes me heavy. I'm lighter when I'm lower. I'm higher when I'm heavy. From the song Nico and the Niners. Could the jumpsuit be his clone body? Now the vulture is a symbol in the occult for the goddess, but the dark goddess aspect, kind of like Kali, if you will, the destroyer. And the vulture pops up in a lot of these music videos in Trench. Okay, Kali feeds on blood, the blood victim. So putting it all together, I believe that all the top hit songs and movies and TV shows, but mainly the music is being written by uh, twins, a set of twins, maybe more than one in general. It's twins being used at the cloning centers to write um, all the music. You can use one twin. So they, the twins share this connection. So, you know, one twin can make the instrumental while the other twin sings. You have Horus and Ma'at, Horus being the word, Ma'at being the sound, the, the music, the music of the spheres. And here I'm elaborating a little bit on my own theory. See, in middle game, the male twin gets language and the female twin gets uh, mathematics so that's the when you split the doctrine of logos in half it splits along those lines of language and math you can also split it in other ways there's another set of twins that gets order and chaos you can split it in that way but, but Horace he's like the pre-christ figure so he's the word the language, the music, the lyrics. And the lyrics. So the lyrics are being channeled by the Horus current. That's why we get such poetry and such seemingly complex lyrics. Now you might say, the lyrics aren't that complex. But if you actually look closely, they go above and beyond uh, the capacities of these uh, these idols that are these performers that are ri supposedly writing these this music it's it's too complex for them I, it's the way that it interlaps and interlinks with so many other uh, pieces of creative output to me speaks of a higher intelligence that's being channeled through not in every song but you get glimpses of it uh, here and there. Some artists more than others. Okay, so the, the lover's card, it's its ruled by Gemini. Each tarot card gets a, gets a, a, a zodiac sign assigned to it or a planet. And so Gemini, the twins. So the lovers, are they really twins? Is it not a male and female lover as we see on the surface, but really a male and female set of twins, just like the Horus and Ma'at current uh, that Kenneth Grant discusses. So 
the son and daughter of Isis and Osiris, the son being a aspect of the father, just like the daughter being an aspect of the mother. That's why the word ma'at be- contains the M-O-T, mother, ma'at, just like Mawit uh, or Mut, the vulture goddess in Egypt, was probably an earlier rendition of this because the daughter becomes the mother through the uh, through the working of man. This is cosmic evolution. Now, the lover's card is uh, associated with the Hebrew letter Zayin, which is the the sword. drop is something I remember Donald Marshall pointing out at one point um, and you learn to spot it here and there in these music videos and movies it's the falling unconscious it's alluding to when a clone falls unconscious at the cloning center because their driver their the operating consciousness wakes up in the real world out of REM sleep and when they wake up their clone drops to the floor so Ellie Golding seems highly suspect to me if we look at her song Mirror just the title alone uh, kind of hints at twins she sings are we star-crossed lovers I look in the mirror. Where do these demons come from? In that song, Guns and Horses, that we just saw, the drop, the fall, she sings, I left my house, left my clothes, door wide open, heaven knows, you're so worth it, you are. Which to me seems like talking about the twins seek each other out in the real world. So in middle game, the they're separated at birth and they have to find each other again. Talked about this in the first video. Some loose threads, bits and pieces here. In the song Levitate, where he mentions the vulture, he also says, Cowards only come through when the hour's late and everyone's asleep, mind you. Okay, asleep in REM sleep and then sent to the cloning center. The cloning center only operates when everyone's asleep, mind you. He has a song called Pet Cheetah, same album, Trench. He sings, I've got a pet cheetah down in my basement. I've raised him and bathed him and named him Jason Statham. I've trained him to make these beats. Now my pet pet cheetah is quicker in the studio than on his feet. Hmm. So we have this idea of a of a pet or a slave being forced to make beats. That'll do it for me. Thanks for watching.